gross $26,000. Hey, this is Sean with Weekend Trucking, and if you're not allergic to a little bit of work and a lot of money, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Hey, we got a great one today for you. You may have seen my full-time pay with part-time hustle video. Well, in today's video, we are going to take it to the next level, and I'm gonna show you how you can make bank in RV transport. Here we go. So I'm gonna actually show you right up here behind me what it takes over the course of a week to gross $26,000 and uh, more importantly, take home enough after every trip to put money in your pocket to make over $150,000 a year. Are you ready? Like, do you want me to show you and talk through how you can do that? Come on! Just a few disclaimers before we really dive into it. Uh, one, you don't need a CDL. Uh, you don't need your own authority. You don't need your own commercial insurance. That's the beauty of RV transport. But you do need to be willing to put in some elbow grease or just, you know, work along with being on the road like a full-time gig. So not the part-time strategy that I take. But after being in the haul and tow division and having a few weeks where I had inadvertently been running my 70 hour clock to exhaustion, I started to see what the real potential was and I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Okay, so you see me loading a car up right about now in the M2 Freightliner non-CDL setup. And you're probably wondering, yeah, but it's not RV transport. Well, yes, it is. It is RV transport. And so how do you make more money? How do you compete with, we'll say, the big dogs? You level up the division that you're in. So if you're not afraid to work a little, because this is more work tenfold, well, maybe not tenfold, I will say fivefold, uh, than single pulls, uh, you level up the division that you're in. So how, do, how does it happen? You get backhauls through Central Dispatch, taking you out to your outbound units. So in the haul and tow it, you're gonna see two campers. Uh, and then once you drop, you're going to get yourself another backhaul to either take you back to the Elkhart, you know, the Indiana area, or take you back home. And then from home, you get a backhaul off Central to take you to Elkhart for a next trip. Now, one of the keys to this is ensuring that your outbound campers are over or right at that 1500 mile mark. So that's gonna be your bread and butter of it. At 250 to a mile, that is a great payday. And then when you're doing your backhauls, what you wanna look for, it, again, not the old trucker mentality, but you wanna look for total, just gross pay on it. Now. If you're looking at, you know, I'm starting here, I dropped here and I'd like to get back to Elkhart. Well, if you gotta drive a hundred miles to pick something up that's paying an extra 75 to a hundred dollars and you know, the other option, eh, probably not the best choice. But look for those loads on Central Dispatch and how I sort it out is I go price and then it goes drop off destination. But what I care about is the price. And then I look at the map and does it make sense for me to take this? Typically it's always, I'm always grabbing from the city that I'm in and I'm dropping in a city that is on my way, if not to the destination. So if you can get your backhauls, and it, this isn't hard from what I've been gathering now, doing it for a few months. If you can get your backhauls to be at or right around a thousand dollars so just basically cover your fuel in some cases it even puts a little bit more money in your pocket it allows you to take home that entire outbound pay so i'm gonna look down for a little bit again now you're probably seeing that i'm loading up or delivering two campers one trip in particular uh, i've had two or three weeks now where i've been right at this range of if i were to continue it grossing that 26, 25, $26,000 a month revenue. So uh, 
on my South Texas trip, if you watch the vlog on that, that's a whole nother story. But uh, on my South Texas trip, what I had was at a little car, paid about $276.25 is what my cut of it was. And then the main, the bread and butter went down to La Fera, Texas. South, South, South Texas. Never going that far South again. But anyways, it paid out just over 3900 3907.60. On my way back, I drove over to McAllen, Texas, which was like a 25 minute drive, picked up an SUV that went all the way up to Iowa. So it took me back to my home state and it paid $1,000 of which I got $850. So when you look at, again, we're gonna talk about the gross, then we're actually gonna talk about the payout which is what you actually would get put on your Calm Data card, uh, and then that take home. You know, do whatever the heck you want to do with it once you get it in your pocket. I don't care what you do with it. I don't care if you got a thousand dollar truck payment. I don't care. I don't care if you don't have a truck payment. I don't care if you got four hundred dollar a month insurance. It's yours to do what you want with. So for that trip, which maybe you're seeing the SUV part of it now, I don't know. The gross pay of that for one week was over sixty five hundred dollars to be exact. I'll place that right here or somewhere when we're editing. Uh, it was $6,581. Now, what was the payout? Meaning the amount of money that you actually got on your Calm Data card. So uh, if you're in the RV transport space, you know that there's pole fees. There's, there's little minute things. Uh, total payout on that week was $5,033. Put that right there. Now, the variable expense, the one thing that keeps you from getting those final settlements, again, if you're an RV transport, you know, you get the advance, the first half advance, right when you book it, you get the final settlement, the last half minus any expenses after it's delivered and you submit your paperwork, it transflows through, yada, yada. The one variable expense, it's fuel. Again, super truckers, you could disagree with me. That's great. We're talking about the same numbers, but you just happen to spin them in such a way that it seems negative to others, but you know that you're just misleading them. So fuel for this week on that run, and that was when diesel prices were, were already up there, was $997.07, which makes the take home, the money that I was actually able to put in my pocket, scratch that, before I take home any money, I set 15% aside. So I actually set aside $755.08, and then I took home $3,281.70 on the dot, right there. So you can do whatever you want with your take home money. The actual take home amount was $4,036.78 right there. Here's see again, wherever that shows up. I don't know. Can you make money in RV transport? Yeah. And there's different levels to it. You can make money in single poles, people. Come on now. Don't listen to the naysayers. Uh, I'd say the worst part is fellow RV transporters that try to downplay it because they're scared of people taking their money. I'm gonna do a video on the RV transport trends, just the market analysis. You know, where has RV transport sales been? What have they trended and what's the projections? Because that negative scarce mindset just drives me nuts. If you're somebody that wants to make a living and you're able, again, I'm not going to continue that pace. There's been a few weeks that I've done it just because things happen. And then I'm like, well, let's make the most of it. Again, if you watch my vlogs, you know that, you know, if it's not something, it's something. Anyways, if you're somebody that's on the road all the time right now, you're doing single poles and you just want to do more. You want to make more. You enjoy getting your hands dirty and working a little level your game up and you will seriously level your income up. Again, this is not amateur hour. It just depends on what level of the industry you're in and you can make a killing when it comes to getting paid. The numbers I'm sharing with you aren't even the cream of the crop. They're like up there, but there's more to be had. Hopefully 
you find what I talk about, how I look at things, um, just from a different lens, especially from traditional trucker mindset of breaking everything down and looking at everything in front of you from a, we'll say a secondary lens. Again, I've talked about it in that business 101 video. It's like viewing my revenue from the gym standpoint as a cost per member. You know, what's the average cost per member per account? That's a great secondary thing to look at, but it's not what we primarily focus on when we're growing a business. You look at revenue, expenses, what's your take home? This industry should be no different. Again, I'll catch a ton of flack in the comments. I know, I get it. Uh, and I'm cool with disagreeing, but hey, uh, let's be real. This is my channel. And if you start to just get to a level that is just disrespectful or is just too negative, you're out. Sorry, not sorry. Again, hey, everybody has the opportunity to make the most of the endeavors that they're in. And if you don't gain anything else from all of what I provide, I hope that's something. So anyways, go ahead, like this video, subscribe for crying out loud if you haven't, and go ahead, hit that share button, put it in that trucker Facebook group, and let those comments flood in. All right, guys, that is it. Stay tuned. More videos, more mini-series uh, are to come on the Weekend Trucking channel. Until the next video, guys, drive safe. See you guys out there.